This is Tom from the Rolling Fix. Hi guys. And uh, he's an expert bike mechanic and we're so fortunate to have him working with us, helping with um, fixing any Super Series 3 issues that are out there on the road. Uh, he's happy to jump in and help. Today I thought we'd go over some road rules for bicycle riding and because that covers the Super Series 3 bicycle riding as well. Yeah, I guess I've been riding on the roads for many years. Yeah. Um, both in Lycra and also in a commuter aspect. Yeah. So I guess you would say different purposes. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it can be a bit daunting out there, especially if you don't know what your rights are. You know, so. Yeah, exactly. I guess that's the main thing for me is what are our rights when it comes to other cars that are mm. intimidating yeah. us and, and where we sit on the road and what we should do in certain situations. Yeah. So. so you can see this symbol in the middle of the road. This is what I want to ask Tom about. So there's these cars like smashing down here. Look at this van, right? This taxi. This is coming down, but he's going to drive directly over this cycle symbol, and it's a 60k zone. Is this right? Is this right, Tom? Well, this is just, um, you know, it's a really a pointless piece of marking because every road we've got the right to be on. I mean, look at this truck. The you can see ground just shook when it went past. You can see why it's overwhelming, but. You see these little bike bike logos, but maybe they give you a bit of confidence, but it's just like any other road, so. Okay, so these symbols don't really mean anything? Not really, I mean, like, they might. I've always thought that, like, if someone's beeping you and you're riding on top of one of these, then you can kind of, like, point at the ground and say, look, I'm allowed to be here, but it's just like any other road, so. Okay, except for this truck. <laughs> so we can go out there up to 25 kilometers per hour on electric yeah or we can pedal faster if we want to keep up with that truck or you should be able to just pedal on the 25 and they can just pay their time they have to wait yeah, yeah. but uh, is there a minimum speed that you have to no and this is one of those situations where um you're legally allowed to ride two abreast and i would personally have no dramas like the two of us riding down the middle of this road people could beep us but we've got complete right away so okay. that's where you can just tell it to wait and naturally if you can move over you do but here you'd probably just hold your position okay for safety yeah. okay perfect thanks Tom so I guess um, I've just printed out the road rules from the uh, transport uh, roads and maritime services website it basically says in here that um, you need to follow the same rules as cars when you're riding on roads. Is that essentially? Essentially, yeah, that's the yeah, good like, rule of thumb. Like, like, don't go through red stop lights. <laughs> um, don't ride across pedestrian crossings. Uh, uh, any other thing we need to talk about, like basics? Any basics uh, riding on the road? Yeah, like I think you know when you get out there, um, if you haven't ridden much before, like it's really easy to get overwhelmed by everything that's going on. Yeah. Um, and if if you do kind of just take a breath and relax, and if someone does beep you or there is a bit of anger towards you, like just know that you do have right away generally. Um, yep. So take care of yourself first. So like always suggest to ride like in the middle of a lane mm -hmm. um, rather than trying to like in give people the thought that they can overtake you and yep. then everyone kind of gets squished and it's not very comfortable. Um, but I think knowing your rights and you're like what you're allowed to do and not do really, really helps you when people start to know say point a finger at you or, or say yeah. something because you know that you've got the right to be there and someone's saying get off the road you can just you know and you had all well, it's illegal to be on the footpath so you, you know your rights and then you can kind of yeah let that person go and just go oh, you're, just, you're an idiot essentially yeah yep. um, so know your know the rules and then you can kind of relax a lot more um yeah. and i think as like duncan said like oh what do i do here it's like as soon as you have that moment of uncertainty you kind of naturally feel like you're in the wrong. Whereas yep. if you know that you're in the right, then you can actually just sit there in the middle of the, you know, the inter intersection and just wait for yep. your gap as if you're a car. So. Yep. Well, it's a good example right here of like bike path 
infuse them. Yeah. Like a little bit of um, green gives you that like dedicated bike path feeling. And then you come on the footpath and you don't really know where you're meant to go. Yeah. Like I was just thinking then, I was like, is that bit of green meant to send me up there? But now we're on the footpath again and like, it's not really ideal. So I think, especially in Sydney, the infrastructure can often kind of lead you to a dead end. Yeah. Um, or like, I give think you that confidence, but then you're like, wait, where am I? Kind of thing. Yeah. And now we could be booked for being on the footpath. Now we could be breaking the law without even knowing. Uh, so normally I would have just stayed on the road. Right. If I was just riding normally. Yeah. Okay. Especially because it's downhill. There's lights, like no one can really go that fast. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to create a little bike path here oh, that shit. I'm just waiting. And then when you look out the road to see if there's any cars coming in. And food, Duncan. Yeah, truck's going. Let's go. Generally. I think that's a great example of where that truck waited to let us go is that, that people do want to, they don't actually want to hurt people, so where they can, they will let you through. There's like two elements, like if you do know this area well, what I would normally do is ride up and there is a bus lane that you can sit in over there, so you could come and stick to the left which you normally would be and then as you're coming over see how that bus has just gone into the bus lane yeah and i would sit there at the time i wasn't sure if i was able or not to ride in the bus lane so yeah. I was but now i know now you know but otherwise um this lane gets created to turn right and as i say because no one's moving quickly i would just behave like a car as you can see here like people are moving fast but the chances of you being at the front of that bus is pretty slim. You'll probably be back here where it's going a bit slower. And so even when you're going in this direction, you should still occupy the middle of a lane in the slow moving traffic. Yeah, so you've got yeah. two options here. Like you can either jump right on the back of the thing, of the queue, or you could do something where you, you can come up and maybe jump in this keep clear section and just jump behind this white car. Would you go up to the front of the, in front of that van at the start? In this particular case, it doesn't have a pedestrian crossing, so it looks a bit risky. I wouldn't do that. It's, it's one of those like key frustrations for car drivers. Yeah. Like where they're maybe sat two, two or three lights and then someone comes and jumps in front of them. Yeah. Um, pretty sure even motorbikes aren't allowed to lane split to that, but they have to wait. Um, right.